Welcome to Tofurious Toys. Thank you for joining me for this double dose review of Buzz Lightyear. One from Mattel and one from McFarland Toys. Both figures have a window into the packaging that lets you clearly see which figure is inside. The Mattel Buzz Lightyear has Socks the Cat and a pet taxi. The McFarland Mirrorverse Buzz has his backpack and wings to attach to it. Left side of the Mattel package shows it's the Alpha class and it has a artist rendering of Buzz Lightyear and the left side of the, the left side of the McFarlane also has a digital rendering as well as the character name and it indicates that he is a ranged character. The Mattel right side just says Disney Pixar Lightyear. The right side of the McFarlane has the same information as the left side but a different digital rendering of Buzz Lightyear. The top of each box lists the iteration of the property that it comes from. The bottom of each has the obligatory legal information as well as barcodes and product names. The back side of the Mattel version, the top two thirds shows an image of the Buzz Lightyear figure as well as his cat socks and the pet taxi. And the bottom third shows other figures that should be coming out in the near future. The top half of the back side of the McFarland version shows some silhouettes of some other characters from the game. And down here on the bottom half we have other 7 inch scale figures that have been made. To infinity and beyond. All right, let's open this McFarland version first. When I first saw that this figure was being made, I was super stoked. I was excited to get a more adult collector oriented version of the figure. Here is the collector's card that he includes with most of his figures. Pause to read the bio. Here's his backpack. It's got some little slots there to tab the wings into. Standard unbranded stand. Here we go, out of the package, we got this absolute unit of a figure. This dude has some weight to him. He's very top heavy. All right, let's get this backpack plugged into place. Doesn't really look like it's meant to be a backpack that comes off. It's more like they had to make it smaller to fit into the package. Dang, that was a chore. I love the design of this character. I love these greens. He's got his Space Force, I mean, Star Command logo on his chest there. The logo is also there on his belt buckle. He's rocking some metallic bell bottoms. He has to have some massive feet to balance that top heaviness. This jetpack is gorgeous and I love the energy wings that come out of it. The head is on a ball that's popped into the upper torso. So it's got a pretty decent range of movement. More rotational movement than forward or back. You can only look back that far and look down that far. As far as the arms go, these wings are going to get in the way. I'm going to have to pop those off. Wow, those were more of a chore to get off than I thought they would be. He has a full 360 at the shoulder. Shoulder goes out that far. There is a bicep cut that lets you rotate it. There is a single joint at the elbow that lets it bend to 90 degrees. The wrist articulation is up and down as opposed to forward and back. There is a little rotation, but the cuff gets in the way. He has some skin tags on the underside of his arm here. Just kidding, it's probably some kind of attitude thruster. For his lower torso, we've got a couple of ball sections. With both sections extended fully, he bends back that far. Both sections fully extended forward, he leans over that much. Under his own weight, even. Let's see how much rotation there is at his lower torso. It doesn't seem to rotate much at the upper connection. The lower connection can do a full 360 degree rotation. And boy can work them hips. At the legs, at the thigh cut, it can rotate out that far and rotates in a little bit. At the knee, there's just a single joint that lets it fold back to 90 degrees. There is some upward and downward motion at the ankle articulation point. The ankle articulation is hindered by these metal bell bottoms. There is slight rocker articulation and toe articulation.
I like the way this green pops on the camera. It doesn't quite look like this in real life. But it's really gorgeous on the camera here. I almost forgot to demonstrate how far out the leg kicks. He can almost do the full splits. The leg can kick forward that much. And back that far. Let's get these wings pegged back in here. I hope that I'm putting them in correctly. I've never played the game and there's no illustration for it. The only iterations I've seen up to now were physical wings that went all the way out. Something I just noticed is that there is rotation where the elbow pegs into the forearm. It doesn't really affect how far the elbow can bend. All right, let's dig into the Mattel version. I want to see that kitty. First thing we'll look at is his arm laser here. In the Toy Story movies, it was built into his suit. Here we have a pet taxi for Socks the Cat. We'll look more at that later. And here we have Socks the Cat himself. This little guy seems to have quite a few moving parts. Full 360 degree waist rotation. Each back leg moves independently of each other. Each front leg moves independently of each other. And the head has full exorcist rotation. Tiny Cat has more articulation points than I expected in something this small. Okie dokie, let's get this laser installed on his arm here. It doesn't slide over the hand, wrist doesn't pop out. Further investigation showed that it unbuckles right here and you can just wrap it around his wrist and buckle it back into place. Easier said than done. I kind of dig that it's a uh, externally mounted laser. A huge difference between this figure and that guy right there. This one is a lot lighter. His head looks left and right. There is no upward or downward motion. Just left and right. His arm at the shoulder kicks out that far. Goes down that far. Full 360 rotation. There is a bicep cut for 360 rotation. He has a double jointed elbow. Bends at greater than 90. There is a 360 degree rotation at the wrist. Does fold palm in that far. Palm out that far. He has the same diaphragm articulation as that guy. And the waist, I was trying for the waist, but there's 360 at the diaphragm. The waist, you gotta force it, but it'll do 360. Forward bending goes that far. Bending backward that far. His leg kicks out that much, a lot more than the other guy. Kicks out right that far. He can definitely do the full splits there. There is a thigh cut. If you kick it out, you can do a full 360 rotation. The knee is double jointed, allowing for a greater than 90 degree kick in. It is the same ankle as the other guy. It has movement, but it is severely hindered by the bell bottoms. This guy is a little cartoony, but it is from an animated movie, so I guess it kind of works out. Purple is my favorite color, and Green Lantern is my favorite superhero, so I really enjoy purple and green together on figures. Here we have the Space Rangers logo on his arm. Gotta get this to focus. I uh, can't really tell what that logo is. He does have all the same iconic instruments on the front of his suit here. Don't really know what they do, but they're there. Got some purple soles on his shoes, copyright information on his derriere. I dig it. I dig it a whole lot. Here they are side by side. They both got the Star Command wings on the center of their chest there. I like the purple on the Mattel version here better. I appreciate the bulkiness and blockiness of the McFarland version. I like the design and coloration of the McFarland laser. Both of their chins are extremely wide. But I think I prefer the McFarlane face better. The Mattel version has a lot smaller feet. I didn't notice this peg hole before. He didn't come with any weapons or accessories that would plug into that. I wonder what that's for. What other oddities are there? I noticed these holes earlier, but I thought they were for 
screws, but maybe they are for a future release that comes with a jetpack with wings. Hopefully, if there is a future release, it'll also come with a transparent dome helmet. I've seen the smaller scaled versions with a dome helmet. I just realized I didn't go over this pet taxi here. It's pretty cool here. It's got property of Star Command printed on the side here. Let's try to get a better view of this. It's actually got an ID number printed on there, probably for the cat itself. So there's holes in the sides because he's dang sure used to air. All right, let's put the little cat in there. He barely fits. You have to uh, you have to kneel him down to get him in there. Getting the ruler behind the Mattel Buzz Lightyear, we see that he stands at six and five eighths of an inch, and then moving the ruler to the McFarlane Buzz Lightyear, we see that he stands at six and one eighths of an inch at his highest point. The first comparison, we got the Captain Jack Sparrow from the Disney Mirrorverse, also by McFarlane Toys. Next up, we have the standard size Marvel Legends Tony Stark from Hasbro Toys. Followed by another billionaire playboy philanthropist, 112 Collective Batfleck from Mezco Toys. It took me a while to dig this guy out of my bins, but I had to find this Transformers Buzz Lightyear to add to this comparison section. Next up, we have the DC Collectibles DC Green Lantern Hal Jordan. Here we have a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimates Raphael by Super 7. Here we have a Mythic Legions Celtus figure from the Four Horsemen. Here is a 112 Collective Freddy Krueger from Mezco Toys. Celtus makes way for a Masters of the Universe Classics He-Man from Mattel Toys. And finally we have the Fortnite Legendary Series Brawlers Kit from Jazzwares. Oh, he's drunk. Get out of here, Kit. There is a lot to like about each of these figures. For me, my favorite is the McFarlane Mirrorverse Buzz Lightyear. I appreciate the inclusion of the jetpack with the wings. I want the transparent dome that goes over their head. I have yet to see the Lightyear movies, so I don't know the significance of the cat. I like the more realistic proportions of the Lightyear Buzz Lightyear. Let me know what you guys think about each one of these in the comments section below. Well, there it is, wrapping this one up. This has been my double dose review of the Buzz Lightyear figures from Mattel and McFarlane Toys. I very much appreciate your time if you have stuck with me this far. If you like what you have seen, please punch that thumbs up icon in the face. If you did not care for it, please throw some constructive criticism my way. I would like to improve as I continue to do this in the future. Thank you so, so much for joining me here at Tofurious Toys.